It's halftime, and it's 34-33. The green team is leading at this stage by one point. George Zidane, the head coach, said he'd be losing and get blown out. He said he might lose by 30 points. But as I look up, Zidane's green team leads by one. And George Zidane is standing by with Sandra Velarde. Thank you, Randy. I'm here with Coach Zidane for the green team. Coach, uh, walk us through the first half. Are, are you happy with the, the first Sorry, your first half? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the kids are really playing hard. Kids are doing a good job uh, sharing the basketball, hitting timely shots. So, yeah, very, very pleased. I hope we can continue with the second half. And what's it like uh, coaching an all-star team? Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a really good group of kids, a lot of talent on the court. You just kind of let them do their thing. And what's going to be your angle for the next half? Uh, we got to get back on defense, and we got to share the ball a little bit more, and I think we'll be fine. Great. Thank Good you. luck, Coach. All right, thank you, Sandra. And that's the coach of the leading green team, 34-33 at halftime at Cathedral High School. The green leading by one over the black. looking at Sandra you don't want to look at me 34 33 at the break Sandra Velarde has the distinct pleasure of interviewing a good friend of mine I'm worried about his basketball coaching skills because he has so much talent and he's down by one the black side trailing 33 to 34 Trey Meeks with our Sandra Velarde Thank you, Randy. I'm here with Coach Meeks. Meeks, can you uh, take me through the first half? Uh, well, we're just letting the guys get out and have a little fun. Um, as you can see, there wasn't much structured offense, uh, but it's all star game. So we're letting them get up and down. They, we missed some shots, missed some free throws. They'll be better the second half. How hard is it to put together a team, you know, that's never played before? Uh, it's difficult, but um, there's not a lot of a lot at stake today. They're just out here having fun. So it's a good group of guys. They really listen. Um, they want to play together. They like passing, which is rare at an all-star game. So it's not that bad. And where do you see the next half? Um, we're going to get out and run a lot more, um, and we'll finish. They want to play a little bit better defense, so we'll speed it up. We may put a trap in into some special defense to see if we can get them to turn the ball over and go from there. Well, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Randy. Thank you, Sandra. And remember, the meek shall inherit the earth. 34-33, the green leading the black. We'll have the second half in just a moment. Is the basketball a little inbound to begin the second half. Cody Justice will trigger it in. And the second 20 minutes starts with a foul. Wow, we played Cameron two. Cameron Morrell. We played two seconds and we got a foul right away. Wow. Well, Cameron Morrell had nine points in the first half. He led uh, the black team in scoring. Bear Henderson was the high scorer in the game. He had 10 for the team in green. Yeah, Bear really asserted himself in that first half. Here's Morrell again with the nine points. And Bibbins for three. Trying to give his team the lead. Yuck to far, so dangerous. And here's Morrell, and he's got his shot going down today. Cameron Morrell with a dozen. Now he's the high water man in the basketball game, and he's given the black team a 36-34 lead. Yeah, that was a really deep three from the volleyball line. Justin Strings, the young man on his way to Sac State, the Hornet able to put it in. Bibbins not hitting his shots. But Bivens does push up, push the pace for the black team. Spin move by Bear Henderson, and that was fly swatted out of there. A beautiful rejection inside. That's what uh, the big fella can do. Well, you don't see too much of that in high school these days where you have a big man who actually would block some shots. Idrisa Jallo just swallowed that shot. Bear Henderson again, and he's been almost unstoppable. So Morell and Henderson with 12 apiece, and now Morell has 14. Boy, he's got that big physical body. Oh, that was a very nice move, very strong move to the basket with a good finish. Game is even at 38. 
Bear Henderson is hand checked and fouled. Very unusual for an All Star game to be get picked up in the full court, almost like they're pressing. This is Bryant. Long bounce, Strings runs it down by his team's bench. That was nicely done. Bibbins so quick in the open court. The Daily Breeze Player of the Year goes all the way. Jallo dropped a certain basket. We have a tie-up and a foul. Yeah, good hustle. He stayed with the play even though he lost the ball. He got on the ground and got after it. Good hustle. First half, they played with a running clock. Bort, they've changed in the second half. They're going to elongate the game a little bit, which is good, and they're playing the normal stoppage of play on whistles. Maybe they didn't notice in the first half that the clock wasn't stopping. <laughs> That's possible. Now they're going to make up for it. Ball just not dropping. Morell, and now Bibbins puts it in. Justin Bibbins with the bank. 40 to 38, black team leading the green. Ferrari out to Henderson and Bear with three more. Bear Henderson. Nice shot from Bear. Bear's doing it all. Turnaround jumpers, three pointers, driving to the basket. Nice finish on that. Bibbins the other way, and those are the two players that we featured at the top of the program, Henderson and Bibbins. And in this seesaw game, the black team goes out in front by one. Bear the other way, taken away by Jallo. Bear trying to do a little too much on that one where he lost the handle. And Adresa Jallo jams it through from Cathedral. 6'11", 230 pounds is Jallo. 44-41 for the black uniform team. And here comes Bibbins again with the theft. Bibbins with the floater. Justin Bibbins. Very nice with the Tony Parker floater. 46-41, Black leading the green. 16-45 to play. Ferrari, that won't get there. But Bear cleaning up his hit on the arm, and he's going to shoot two. Bear Henderson. Mentioned it earlier in the program, he's thinking about Portland State and also UC Irvine. And, of course, the Anteaters had a tremendous year in the Big West, the regular season conference champion. Yeah, that would be a definitely good pickup for either school for them to uh, have Bear Henderson, who, who can do it, pretty much do it all, rebounds, plays defense, shoots threes, does it all. Got that sweet stroke. Wholesale changes, but, of course, Bear will stay out there for one more. Got to give everybody some playing time in an all-star game. Five in, five out. You coach this. When do you change your philosophy and just put the best guy in there, Bort? Well, usually you'll wait until the end of the game when you get competitive. If it's a close game, then your ego gets in the way and you want to win, even though if it is an all-star game. It's a three-point lead for the black team, and they have it taken away by Dion Henderson. Beautiful job by Dion Henderson to orchestrate that and find Daniel Wright. That was, that was a good decision to pick up full court. Caught them off guard and got a steal. Daniel Wright, like Justin Bibbins, is going to Long Beach State. Bibbins on a scholarship. Daniel Wright's going to walk on the young man at the free throw line. That's a good pickup for Coach Munson over at Long Beach State. He's going to have a pleasure in coaching both of those young men. Coach Munson has uh, had a tremendous recruiting year at Long Beach State. I know you saw a player just last night, Jack Williams, and another all-star game that's on his way to Long Beach State's going to be very good. Yeah, they, they do. Uh, Coach Munson does a great job recruiting in the area. He gets a lot of good players, and it helps when you play probably the best schedule in college basketball. Another one that's jammed through by Dalen Lawrence. He's been impressive, the young man from Rancho Cucamonga on his way to Cal Poly Pomona. That was a very explosive move on that play. Here comes Nick Hamilton with that 4.2 GPA. Hamilton inside, puts it in, off the glass for Nick Hamilton. I don't know how he finished it, but it was a good finish. Kind of just threw it up and it went in for him. Played for Ed Azam at Westchester to Hamilton. Deion Henderson with a pretty left-hand finish. 
Well, he's come in and he's ignited the green side, gets him back to within three. So Scor the black team has the lead here, 50 to 47. Scoring seems to be picking up now. The pace is picked up in this game. Hamilton hits two in a row. 15.30 to play in the game. Forbes turns it over. And a foul on Marcus Forbes from Ponderosa High School up near uh, Sacramento. His dad, Sterling Forbes, played with the Globetrotters. Wow, that's very impressive. Maybe that's where he learned some of his ball handling. I think that's where indeed Forbes learned his ball handling. Well, Marcus, like his dad, following in his footsteps, an outstanding player. Elston Jones with the rebound, and here comes the green team back by two. Right, rims that one in and out, and Dalen Lawrence goes back the other way. Lawrence on the baseline, raising up. Fader rebounds. And Henderson finishes. That's Dion Henderson. We're even at 51. Nice, strong finish there by Henderson. Went to the basket with a lot of confidence. Well, you got to like Lawrence's perseverance. He stayed with it. Yeah, he did. A good, strong finish there. He just stayed with the play and didn't give up on it. Fader battling inside, and he's held. Good job by number 29 of the green side, Jake Fader, 6'7", out of Miracosta. You know, he doesn't seem to pass the look test. You look at him, he doesn't look like a basketball player, but when he's out there, he's getting it done. Well, when I, you have a 2050 SAT score, I don't think it matters. I think it's the Sox that kind of, you know, kind of does it for him. A spectacular finish by Daniel Wright. The cross and reverse layup was fabulous. The draw is 53. Blair Orr can't find it. Rebound Hamilton, who's outworking everybody. Fader to right, right, missed the layup. Got to finish those. Yeah, you got to go up with two hands, two hands. Fundamentals, basic fundamentals. Lawrence with a rare air ball. Henderson for three, short. It's a run down in the corner, rescued beautifully by Nick Hamilton, who's picked up his game. Blair Orr is tough inside. I think both teams are uh, starting to play a little bit less defense here because we're seeing the scoring. Everyone seems to be scoring at will now. Green down by two. Fader with a chance to tie it and does. Jake Fader, we're back to even at 55. And a turnover on the black team. 13.03 to play, 55 is the tie. Yeah, I think that full court uh, press is kind of confusing the uh, black team here. They're not understanding they're getting picked up full court in an all-star game. Well, the coach is doing a nice job here. George Zidane from Cantwell Sacred Heart and Trey Meeks in his 10th year out of Alameda. Timeout on the floor. We'll step out. We're even in a pair of five fives. 55 for each side. The black and the green. 55 is the draw. 13 minutes to play. The green side has it. Looking to reassume control. They've led more than the black side, but it's been a tight contest throughout. I think the best part of this game, Randy, is those uh, dance moves between timeouts. Kind of reminds me of uh, Tom Cruise and Tropical Thunder. Yeah, everybody dancing during the timeouts, having a good time. But not like that. Hamilton puts it up and draws the foul. Nick Hamilton's really picked up his game here in the last three or four minutes. Yeah, he's, uh, it, you know, it seems like some of these kids sometimes have to settle down and relax and as soon as they get to do that, they start to play better, much, much better. 75% foul shooter at Westchester this year. The emotional leader of the Comets. And he drills the first one. A straight A student. Of course, these are all academically well-suited young men, both in the classroom and on the floor. Very smart, high IQ for basketball. Terrific block by Elston Jones. 
And the green's going to get it because of Jones's interior defense. Yeah, that was a good hustle play on that rebound. Everyone was battling for it. Good job. Daniel Wright will walk it up. Marcus Forbes. That's Neon Dion Henderson. A little short there on that Tony Parker floater there. And really with those uniforms, it is like Neon Dion, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Neon Dion Green. We have some more changes. Subs are coming in and out. Twelve twenty to play. A fifty six fifty five game. You love it in terms of equality that the game is this close. Yeah, very uh, well balanced. Good job putting the rosters together and good balance as far as the talent on each team. I think Justin Bibbins down the stretch is going to be a tough guy to stop. He's given the black team a three point lead and now a challenge defensively and a great steal. And Bibbins puts it in after Victor Joseph got the theft. Good job defensively by the black team on that run and jump switch there, really throwing them off. And another turnover. Here comes Bibbins again. And a fabulous finish by Bibbins. Very impressive on that left-handed finish. Black team is definitely picking up the intensity defensively. Well, Trey Meeks asked for his team to pick up the tempo. Strings draws the foul. Going for a ride was Siavash Yektafar. Yeah, that time they were able to break the press, but they got to get a little bit more organized on their press break so they can be a little more effective. Justin Strings, who has a very effective mid-range game at the free throw line, shooting two, average 18.3 points and eight rebounds a game in a senior year in high school. Again, he's going to play for the Hornets of Sacramento State. That's a nice stroke. And we talked about his mid-range game. And you like a physical player like Strings who can shoot the ball from mid-range. Yeah, he's also got good size, very athletic, good body on him. He's going to he's going to do well up in Sacramento. 62 to 57. The green back to within five. Bibbins has been igniting the offense in recent moments. This is Victor Joseph who had that beautiful steal before Bibbins scored. Morell's pass is kicked, so it'll go out of bounds. Randy Rosenblum with the coach, Borda Scotto of Silmar. Always a pleasure to be by your side, Randy. Never a dull moment. You're not kidding, Bort. Bibbins on that baseline, finding Morell. Morell got it back and puts it around and in. Boy, Cameron Morrell, again, I talk about his physicality from his guard position. He, uh, he can move you out of there. Yeah, he's very, very physical for, for a guard. You usually don't see that too often. Justice with a nice look inside, and Jerome Bryant scores. Black team really here pushing the pace. Morrell trying to tip it in, and here comes Bear Henderson to Strings, and Strings is fouled. Good outlet pass there from uh, Bear Henderson. Another aspect of Bear's game you like, his ability to distribute. He almost played like a point guard in the middle of the floor, finding Justin Strings. Well, Bear does a good job rebounding the ball. He looks to outlet. If, not, if it's not there, then he'll push the ball up himself, and he does a really good job at it. 10.42 to play, and Strings has some string music. Really? Really, Randy? Really. 65-60. I'm sure did, Justin's never heard that one before at least he either. Did, you didn't say he has some strings to pull. Well, he made or did somebody pull some strings for get him in the game? Well, he's already in Sac State, so he's pulled those strings. 65-61. Shot up over the iron from Victor Joseph. And strings the other way. And a blocking foul. Players getting a little more serious as we get farther into the game. They want to win. Yeah, a little more physical. We see uh, Coach Meeks up actually uh, up yelling at the officials. We're at Cathedral High School, home of the Phantoms, who had an outstanding team this year. 
Again, the black team has it. Morrell with that steal, but they can't capitalize. Seems like everybody's starting to wake up here from the officials to the players to the coaches. That patent and spin move from Bear Henderson. Cody Justice able to find him, and it's 65 to 63. Black with the ball and a precarious lead at the midway stage of the second half. At Cathedral High School in Los Angeles, right by Chavez Ravine. Beautiful campus here at Cathedral. Bibbins, his pull-up does not get there, and a chance now for the green with a two to tie and a three for the lead. Yeah, Justin trying to force it there on that play. I think he got may have gotten hurt. That's good fast break basketball, and Justin Bibbins with a triple. 68-63, and Bibbins harassing anybody who has the ball. Great read defensively there, anticipating that. Bear against three. Doesn't matter. No problem for Bear. Muscles He's it tripled right back teamed up. and he put it in anyway. That's his game. That's how Bear plays. Cameron Morrell. He is so tough, Cameron. He's really determined to get to that basket. I loved what Barry just did. He got fouled and he goes, what? Who, me? Yeah, like, like most players on every level. Ball comes out of bounds. Hadn't been a whole lot of fouls for an all-star game. And, and in fact, for the most part, it's uh, been fairly well, they shouldn't be. Hoops. It's an all-star game. The officials should just, you know, not make themselves very visible. Victor Joseph off balance. He's going to the free throw line. Didn't and get hit on the arm there. And just as you say that, we have a, a whistle from the official. Yeah, Ferrari got him on the arm. Was that a collision with a Ferrari? It was. And the Ferrari got the worst of it. Victor Joseph. I hope he was insured. Well, he has the insurance of a lead right now. He didn't have to show his insurance card on no, that collision, no, no. did he, Randy? Enough, enough. Okay. <laughs> Board, yeah. Sometimes we have to slow Bort down, and we can see why you are the master of the technical fouls, baiting officials throughout. Really? Well, at least that's what they tell me, you know. Yeah, that is true. Again, you got a technical in the Battle of the Valley this year in an all-star Sometimes all you need game. to drive the point home and let the you officials know. know that you're there. You, know, it was, you said it was a bad call. I thought it was deserved. You were mouthing off the whole game. Here's Dion Henderson. Of course, you like the fact that coaches can pick up technicals. You think it's an entertainment value. By well, picking up you know, in an all-star game, you know, you, you kind of want to get the crowd into it, you know, make it a little bit more entertaining. And I, we, as right now we're having the two coaches meeting at half court, having a discussion. Marcus but sometimes you need to get that tech just to spark your team. Marcus Forbes at the line, averaged 12 points and six assists, plus five rebounds a game in his senior year at Ponderosa High School. Again, that's in Sacramento, about 40 miles outside of Sacramento. And his dad is Sterling, the former Globetrotter. Black by three, they have the ball, 70 to 67. Victor Joseph. Bibbins from the baseline. Henderson's pass, deflected by Joseph and saved by Bibbins to Joseph. He nearly, as a pass, put it in, but the follow shot is jammed in by Adresa Jallo. That was a good hustle played by Bivens. He's all over the court, offensively, defensively. He's everywhere. Just above eight minutes to play. The black by five, 72-67. Well, that's a pass that's out of bounds. Boy, that's a pure giveaway. Yeah, that was a turnover that should not have, have happened. You need to keep it a little bit more simple in those side out of bounds plays. Again, this is the academic all-star game. First time it's ever been played, and they have grand plans for this game. They want to do a national game next year. Well, that wasn't a very smart pass on that play. It's not pick on him. The GPA cumulative above 
And Hamilton on defense, who just picked up that foul with his aggressive defense, 4.2 GPA. I thought there was a little bit of an offensive straight on there, a little bit of a push off to get that call. Marcus Forbes will tow the stripe. There's a official's timeout. 7.52 to play. The Black 72, the Green 67. 72-67, the black team ahead of the green, but the green and Marcus Forbes perched at the charity stripe. Sinks the first one, has another one coming. Of course, in these all-star games, you'll have runs swaying momentum all the time. Good intensity level right now. Kids are really playing hard, really competing against one another. I think it's going to get even more competitive in the next seven and a half minutes. Yeah, that uh, desire to win really kicks in. Here's Dennis Ashley, and he comes up short. Daniel Wright rebounds. Deion Henderson, an illegal pick. That's against Elston Jones. Well, you rarely ever see that called in a uh, all-star game, an illegal screen. Seven twenty to play as Nick goes all the way. Nick Hamilton. Yeah, nice strong finish on that play. Boy, he's played very well in the second half. Again, we talked about his leadership at Westchester. Just a solid all-around player. Well, Westchester always seems to produce quality players year in and year out. Yeah, Coach Zam doing a great job over at Westchester. Yeah, we saw Hamilton play in the collision games, and he's been very much uh, a more active player today. There's a block. Beautiful play by Jallo. I was but, ready he was able to block it and keep it. And inside, Elston Jones cleaning up. Three-point lead. For the team with the ball, Green now harassing Bibbins. That trap making it very difficult. But Young with a good pass to Hamilton, and it's no good. Here's Fader, and Bibbins picked his pocket. Nice defensive play by Bibbins, very patient. How quick is that from end to end? Did Justin it, Bibbins. Did it on the defensive end, and then he does it on the offensive end. He's going to be a really special player. And Bibbins with the takeaway. And the step throw beautifully done by Dalen Lawrence. And Lawrence will go to the stripe. 76-71. Black team has opened up a five-point lead. 6.05 to play in regulation. Played a quick first half. And again, they changed the rule, stopping the clock. A normal game in the second half. I, I think they may have uh, realized they made a mistake in that first half and said, oops, we better play running time in the second half. Well, that running clock did make that first half evaporate in a hurry. Well, the good thing, Randy, is that he can get you to the club faster so he can show some of those dance moves tonight. I'm just emulating you on the sideline, Borda Skoda. <laughs> Lead is six. The green is trailing with six to play. Boy, these coaches are really coaching from the sideline, exhorting their players to play defense, and they've tightened it up as Blair Orr slaps it out of bounds. Yeah, I had noticed that both coaches have gotten uh, more into the game, uh, talking to the officials, talking to their players. They're getting very competitive out here. Randy Rosenblum with Borda Scotto and Sandra Velarde helping us out with interviews today. We'll step out. 5.51 to play. The lead is six for the black team. Let's see if the green machine can make up some ground. Well, they get a call going their way. Hamilton with the foul. So free throws for the green side. Nice play there out of the night, out of the uh, out of bounds, out of the timeout. Good play drawn up in the huddle. You always want to score out of those timeouts and get an easy shot. Justin Strings has been able to get to the foul strike with great frequency today. 
and showing accuracy. Of course, the foul stops the clock with 5.50 to play. Strings trying to bring his green team to within four. Well, Justin Bibbins, you know, you have pressure, but this guy handling it can eradicate a lot of that pressure. Well, you really can't pr uh, press Justin Bibbins. If you press him, you're really asking for it. Controlled by the green team. Deion Henderson on that sideline, able to track it, but it's torn away by Bibbins for the moment. Here's Bear Henderson. Got it back and scores. Bear Henderson. Good job by Bear staying with the play. Even though he lost the ball, he was able to get it back and finish. 77-75, the lead and the ball for the black team with 5-10 to play. Bibbins hits two more. Justin Bibbins. Bibbins doing it all out here today. He How can do it all. How good is he going to be at Long Beach He's State? He's a great pickup for Coach Munson at Long Beach. Can he start as a freshman there? I think I could see. I should see why not. Absolutely. I'm surprised he hasn't been recruited by some of the other bigger programs on the West Coast like your USC's or UCLA's. Elston Jones puts it in. Well, Long Beach State plays one of the most difficult schedules in America. Much tougher schedule, by the way, in the preseason than either SC or UCLA. Here's Bear Henderson getting clobbered by Hamilton. Nick wants to help him up. Boy, Bear Henderson is a competitor, isn't he? He absolutely he went to the hole strong. He, as a matter of fact, he didn't like being knocked to the floor on that play. We have a great game brewing here. Maybe an overtime game in our first academic contest. Bear Henderson has two. He needs to knock them both down to get us back to even. He has the first one. Cameron Morell's going to check in for the team in black. He's played very well today. The Bear. Out of hibernation and playing in the All-Star game. Really, really Randy? <laughs> is, that, is that what we're going to now? <laughs> 79 is the time. We got a Bear, a Ferrari out here, and pulling some strings. Well, Morell. Good look there. Bibbins couldn't convert. And Bibbins got back defensively and took it away from Henderson. Bibbins has a chance to be MVP of this game as well. Over the iron. Remember, he's already the collision MVP. Now, I've seen one player, Bryce Jones, now it goes by Bryce Dijon Jones when he was at Taft, be the MVP of the Battle of the Valley and the collision games. Bibbins trying to be the MVP of the collision games and our first ever academic all-star affair. But he's not the Battle of the Valley MVP. He didn't play in the Battle of the Valley. He probably would have been the MVP. He probably would have. He'd probably be MVP at every game he plays in. First team elite all state. That was just named this week, and Bibbins is in there, and that's no surprise. Lead is one. The Green with a chance to get the lead here. They're down by just the one point. Brian had a good look. The shooter, they're all yelling it, and it's Yektafar who drilled the triple. Nice rebound, nice push up the floor to the open pass for the open jump shot. He had 34 against Sam Ohio as a career high when he was at Beverly Hills. He was the captain of the Normans. Would Sam Ohai be Santa Monica? And a layup for Bryant. I'm not going to endorse all your statements. Well, Sam Ohai, you know, I've been around 30 years. I've never heard of Sam Ohai. Inside, beautiful move by Dale and Lawrence. The team's exchanging baskets, which is good news for the black team because they lead by four as we approach three minutes to play. Jerome Bryant, number 19. Of course, this is home floor. Deep shot from Bear Henderson, a little bit too strong. Bibbins falls down, but he's able to find Cameron Morrell. Yektafar inside the three-point line, so the figures he missed it. He hits the three, missed the two. That's good ball movement. 
And Marcus Forbes with the three ball, and it's a one-point game. 85-84, the black by one, 2.38 to play. Green team led by one at halftime, 34-33. More offense in the second half. The black team has the ball, and now they have the one-point lead with two and a half to play. And this is where everyone's ego kicks in. Everybody wants to win. Everyone wants to make the big play down the stretch. Bear Henderson came over, trapped Bibbins, but there's a foul. I, I, I didn't like that call at all. Bibbins turned right into Bear and pretty much put the ball in his chest, and Bear just took it from him. I didn't see a foul on that play. You're questioning the call of Jerry Liu? Absolutely. I'm about to have a talk with Jerry after the game. As Coach uh, as George is over there talking to him now about it. Bibbins to the line. Had a very impactful second half. Earns the bonus. 86-84. This guy is going to be very good in the Big West. Of course, Casper Ware, who's now in the NBA, was a great point guard for the 49ers. And they got another good one here, certainly, in Justin Bibbins, the 5, 850-pound all-star. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of more of a, like a Nate Robinson type of player. He gets on the court, and he's so competitive offensively and defensively. plays with a lot of pride. Well, it's a one-possession game, Bort, with uh, 2.20 to play. So, again, the organizers of this game do a terrific job in terms of equaling out the rosters. Yeah, it could come down to a last-second shot. Turnover, you hate that. Of course, these teams, it's not like they've had a whole lot of practice time, but that one hurts. Yeah, it wasn't a very smart entry pass on that play. Here's something that Deion Henderson has to understand. I know you want to force the turnover and make a big play for your team, but you're 45 feet away from the basket, and the last thing you want to do is foul Justin Bibbins and put him back at the line. No, absolutely. You just want to contain him out front. You don't want to be too aggressive because if you are, he's just going to go right by you, and you're going to end up fouling him. Can you settle a kid down, or is the adrenaline kicked in so much where it's just difficult? No, well, sometimes you just call a timeout and, you know, look a kid in the eye and tell him, hey, relax, play him smart, and play him straight up. If you're too aggressive, he's going to go right by you and score. But you can't give Bibbins these freebies. Very well-spoken, nice kid. State champions at Bishop Montgomery. 89-84 for Bibbins and the black team. Exactly two minutes to play. Bear going to work. And a beautiful rebound for Jalo. Idrissa Jalo. Yeah, Bear's trying to take over here in this last two minutes of the game. Well, Bibbins controlling the game for the black side. The Hamilton in the paint. Oh, an air ball. But Jalo got it back. He's been in the lane about a month, so they finally called it three yeah, seconds. Yeah, I was wondering, hey, is this guy ever going to blow the whistle? I thought he had to pay rent to be in there that long. Well, the green team still has a chance here with a minute 25. Strings in three-point country. That's a big hit. A three ball. Definitely a big shot. Bryant with the key delivery, 89-87. Now it's just a one possession game. The black team has to be smart with the ball here and run some clock. Minute to play, Bibbins. The pass surprised Hamilton. But Morrell got it away from Ferrari. I don't think Hamilton was ready for that pass that was coming from Bibbins. Still loose, Bear picks it up to Bryant. And he's fouled, and he can tie it with 41.5 to play. I think uh, Coach Meeks may uh, need to settle his guys down and spread them out and tell them to run some clock. Critical foul shots for Jerome Bryant. Black team needs to take good care of the ball this, this time down the floor with uh, 40 seconds left. The game should be tied, or they should be up. Either way, you want a good shot this next time down the floor. Well, it's tough to hit foul shots nowadays. 
Players just do not execute the foul shot like they used to. It's practice, Randy. It's a lack of practice. They just don't practice the free throws anymore like they used to. We've seen Justin Bibbins put him in for the black side. But Bryant just hit a huge three. He's got a second foul shot coming. So his three has really brought the green team back into it. 41.5 to play. 89-87. 89-88. They just need to keep it solid. There's a 35-second shot clock, 15 seconds in difference. They just need to play solid defense here and get a stop. Morell's trapped, finds an open player. Inside, beautiful slam from Dalen Lawrence. Morell saw the trap and found the open man. Yeah, someone fell asleep on that backside and didn't rotate. Bear went for the tie. It's tipped out of bounds to the black team with 19.2. I think that shot was a little too early. They could have uh, been a little bit more patient and got a better shot out of that possession. There's a timeout on the floor. 19.2 seconds to play. The Black leads 91 to 88. Justin Bibbins with 23 second half points, 28 in the game. Yeah, outstanding. I, I, whether they win or whether they lose, he's the most valuable player of this game easily, hands down. A steal. Here's a chance. Strings the other way. Nearly banked it in. Foul with 10 seconds to play. Yeah, they seem to be in a rush on that possession. You know, you have nine seconds left. You had 12 when you stole the ball. You need to be a little bit more patient and get a good shot. Terrific you may... ball denial, though, to get the turnover. Yeah, absolutely good defense. Uh, picked them up full court. I don't think the black team was ready for that, but you got to get a good shot off with that possession. 91-88, the black team going to the free throw line with Adresa Jallo. Let's see what Adresa can do here. I think he makes it one. It's going to be very tough for the green team to get back in the game. 9.9 .9 seconds left. It's double bonus. Uh, this would open the door if it doesn't drop. Absolutely. He misses this. We got a one possession game. He makes it. We can still get a good quick shot off in a timeout. You just want overtime, don't you? No, Randy. Actually, I don't. <laughs> well, it's a four-point game as Jallo hits. Don't want a foul here. Get a shot here and a quick timeout. Wow, you nearly had a four-point play with 1.2 seconds left. The ball was in the air. And Bear Henderson is going to line for three. Well, he's, Bear should actually try to make the first two and then intentionally miss the third one because I don't think they have any timeouts left. Well, that would be the strategy. He's looking to the sideline on what to do. But he has Bear to has make 22 points in the game. But he has to make the first two in order for this to work. There's the first one, 92-89. Well, the difference is if he misses this one, he has to miss the next one. Then you got to tip it and hit a three. He wants to make it and cut it to two and does. Now they'll call the timeout and talk about the strategy down by two. Well, at this point, he only has one option. That is to purposely miss it, battle for a rebound, try to either get a foul or, or get a shot up before time expires. You don't have enough time to kick the ball back out for a three or actually to fight for the ball. So uh, the black team's definitely going to have to box out in order to win this game. It's all in the boxing out right here for the black team. The green team's going to have to get a good miss and go get the ball and try to get a shot off. Well, our first academic all-star affair here at Cathedral High School has been very good, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's been a very competitive game. It's been a good game. Usually all-star games are, you know, are for fun. You know, nobody even plays defense. No one's really competitive. But this game... Seemed to be a little bit different today with, with the kids really being aggressive and really going at it. Well, this second half has really opened up on the scoreboard despite the tight defense. A lot more points. Again, it was 34-33 at the intermission. It's 92-90 with 1.2 seconds left. 
Bear Henderson has one foul shot. He can cut it to one or miss it, which is the preferred strategy. See if they can get the rebound and tie the game. Yeah, I think they're going to have two guys on the outside just sprint in and try to get a tip, try to get a rebound on this miss. And the black team has both Jallo and Orr, their bigger players, to rebound. Hamilton rebounds, and the game's over. Well, he barely did his part. He missed the shot. So the black team wins it 92 to 90. We'll come back with our post game in just a moment. Ninety-two to ninety, the black side over the green team. A couple of heroes today: Nick Hamilton of Westchester, and as always, Justin Bibbins, who was our MVP of the Collision All-Star Affair. Two real critical components, and why the black won by two. And they're standing by on the floor with our Sandra Velarde. Thank you, Randy. I'm here with Justin, which is a MVP again, right? Okay. So you turned 29 points tonight, four in the first half, 25 in the second half. What made you decide to, what prompted you to turn it on? I really just got into the rhythm. Uh, first half I was kind of stiff, a little rusty because I haven't played in a while, but uh, when I got in the rhythm, it all started coming together. And what are your plans after high school? Uh, going to Long Beach State to play there, so taking summer school and, and just going and have a great time. Excited about playing for Long Beach? Oh, yeah, definitely. Going in there and playing, traveling with them, and hopefully win a championship. Thank you, Justin. Now, Nick, please tell us what your GPA is. It's 4.2 unweighted. I mean, 4.2 weighted and 4.0 unweighted. And how do you balance school and basketball? Well, it's not that hard for me because I've been doing this since middle school, just straight A's. And so I just take my time in the classroom and then I focus what I need to do on the court. What are your future plans? I'm um, already uh, SIR to UC Berkeley and I plan to walk on there. You guys both played a great game. Thank you. Congratulations. Back to you, Randy. And thank you, Sandra. That's going to wrap it up from Cathedral High School. A 92-90 victory for the black team over the green side. For Sandra Velarde, who did a nice job with our interviews today, and for Board of Scoto, I'm Randy Rosenblum. A two-point win in our first academic all-star game for the black team. So long, everybody.